Good afternoon and welcome to Midweek Connection at First Presbyterian Church of San Angelo. It is Wednesday, September 7th, and I'm Pastor Joel. And I'm Natalie. And we're here to do what we usually do on Wednesdays, and that is to go through the daily lectionary texts for today, uh, talk about it, and see what the Lord might be trying to tell us. Uh, I certainly want to uh, thank Natalie for again being here. I know that she's got a lot of things going on in her life, and just taking this time to do so is a... Uh, uh, it's just nice that we have a chance to do this together. So let me open us in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for, uh, honestly, the many things that you have uh, called us to do. We are grateful that you have not called us to do everything, that you are God, that you are King, that you are Lord, uh, and that you continue to work in our lives and in the lives of our loved ones and our families and our friends and uh, in our church and in our community. Uh, Lord, you are the one that holds all things together. And so I pray, Lord, that even today as Natalie, Natalie and I read these texts and discuss together that we would recognize uh, your, uh, your authority and your righteousness and that we would recognize our need to depend upon you. And so we're grateful, Lord, for your word to us. Uh, I pray that it would be challenging and convicting and that we would become, uh, even today, uh, more like the person of Jesus Christ um, being transformed into his image. So we thank you for this time, and we give it to you. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm. We are starting this morning with, not this morning, this afternoon. We're starting today with Psalm 89. Goodness, Psalm 89 is a good long one. I will sing of your steadfast love, O Lord, forever. With my mouth, I will proclaim your faithfulness to all generations. I declare that your steadfast love is established forever. Your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. You said, I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to my servant David, I will establish your descendants forever and build your throne for all generations. Let the heavens praise your wonders, O Lord, your faithfulness in the assembly of the holy ones. For who in the skies can be compared to the Lord? Who among the heavenly beings is like the Lord, a God feared in the counsel of the holy ones, great and awesome above all that are around him? O Lord God of hosts, who is as mighty as you, O Lord? Your faithfulness surrounds you. You rule the raging of the sea when its waves rise, you still them. You crushed Rahab like a carcass, you scattered your enemies with your mighty arm. The heavens are yours, the earth also is yours. The world and all that is in it, you have founded them. The north and the south, you created them. Tabor and Hermon joyously praise your name. You have a mighty arm, strong as your hand, high your right hand. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Steadfast love and faithfulness go before you. Happy are the people who know the festal shout to walk, O Lord, in the light of your countenance. They exalt in your name all day long and extol your righteousness. For you are the glory of their strength. By your favor, our horn is exalted. For our shield belongs to the Lord, our King to the Holy One of Israel. When you spoke in a vision to your faithful one and said, I have set the crown on one who is mighty. I have exalted one chosen from the people. I have found my servant David. With my holy oil I have anointed him. My hand shall always remain with him. My arm shall also shall strengthen him. The enemy shall not outwit him. The wicked shall not humble him. I will crush his foes before him and strike down those who hate him. My faithfulness and steadfast love shall be with him. And in my name his horn shall be exalted. I will set his hand on the sea and his right hand on the rivers. He shall cry to me, You are my Father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. I will make him the firstborn, the highest of the kings of the earth. Forever I will keep my steadfast love for him, and my covenant with him will stand firm. I will establish his line forever and his throne as long as the heavens endure. If his children forsake my law and do not walk according to my ordinances, if they violate my statutes and do not keep my commandments, then I will punish their transgression with a rod and their iniquity with scourges. 
but I will not remove from him my steadfast love or be false to my faithfulness. I will not violate my covenant or alter the word that went forth from my lips. Once and for all I have sworn by my holiness, I will not lie to David. His line shall continue forever, and his throne endure before me like the sun. It shall be established forever like the moon, an enduring witness to the skies. But now you have spurned and rejected him. You are full of wrath against your anointed. You have renounced the covenant with your servant. You have defiled his crown in the dust. You have broken through all his walls. You have laid his strongholds in ruins. All who pass by plunder him. He has become the scorn of his neighbors. You have exalted the right hand of his foes. You have made all his enemies rejoice. Moreover, you have turned back the edge of his sword, and you have not supported him in battle. You have removed the scepter from his hand and hurled his throne to the ground. You have cut short the days of his youth. You have covered him with shame. How long, O Lord, will you hide yourself forever? Will How long will your wrath burn like fire? Remember how short my time is. For what vanity you have created all mortals. Who can live and never see death? Who can escape the power of Sheol? Lord, where is your steadfast love of old? which by your faithfulness you swore to David. Remember, O Lord, how your servant is taunted, how I bear in my bosom the insults of the peoples, with which your enemies taunt, O Lord, with which they taunted the footsteps of your anointed. Blessed be the Lord forever. Amen and amen. In Psalm 147, verses 1 through 11, Praise the Lord. How good it is to sing praises to our God, for he is gracious, and a song of praise is fitting. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the outcasts of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He determines the number of the stars. He gives to all of them their names. Great is our Lord and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. The Lord lifts up the downtrodden. He casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make melody to our God on the lyre. He covers the heavens with clouds, prepares rain for the earth, makes grass grow on the hills. He gives to the animals their food, and to the young ravens when they cry. His delight is not in the strength of the horse, nor his pleasure in the speed of the runner. But the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him, and those who hope, who hope in his steadfast love. We've got selections from Job, from uh, verse uh, chapter 29, and then mostly from chapter 30. Job again took up his discourse and said, but now they make sport of me, those who are younger than I, whose fathers I would have disdained to set with the dogs of my flock. What could I gain from the strength of their hands? All their vigor is gone. And now my soul is poured out within me. Days of affliction have taken hold of me. The night racks my bones, and the pain that gnaws me takes no rest. With violence he seizes my garment, he grasps me by the collar of my tunic. He has cast me into the mire, and I have become like dust and ashes. I cry to you, and you do not answer me. I stand, and you merely look at me. You have turned cruel to me. With the might of your hand, you persecute me. You lift me up on the wind. You make me ride on it, and you toss me about in the roar of the storm. I know that you will bring me to death to the house appointed for all living. Surely one does not turn against the needy when in disaster they cry for help. Did I not weep for those whose day was hard? Was not my soul grieved for the poor? But when I looked for good, evil came. And when I waited for light, darkness came. My inward parts are in turmoil and are never still. Days of affliction come to meet me. I go about in sunless gloom. I stand up in the assembly and cry for help. I am a brother of jackals and a companion of ostriches. My skin turns black and falls from me, and my bones burn with heat. My lyre is turned to mourning, and my pipe to the voice of those who weep. In Acts chapter 14, verses 19 through 28. But Jews came there from Antioch and Iconium, and won over the crowds. Then they stoned Paul and dragged him out of the city, supposing that he was dead. But when the disciples surrounded him, he got up and went into the city. The next day he went on with Barnabas to Derbe. 
After they had proclaimed the good news to that city and had made many disciples, they returned to Lystra, then on to Iconium and Antioch. There they strengthened the souls of the disciples and encouraged them to continue in the faith, saying, It is through many persecutions that we must enter the kingdom of God. And after they had appointed elders for them in each church with prayer and fasting, they entrusted them to the Lord in whom they had come to believe. Then they passed through Pisidia and came to Pamphylia. When they had spoken the word to, in Perga, they went down to Italia. From there they sailed back to Antioch, where they had been commended to the grace of God for the work that they had completed. When they arrived, they called the church together and related all that God had done with them and how he had opened a door of faith for the Gentiles, and they stayed there with the disciples for some time. And our gospel lesson today is from John chapter 11, verses 1 through 16. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Martha was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill, so the sister sent a message to Jesus. Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though, Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. After having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to his disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought that he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. Psalm 1. Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or take the path that sinners tread, or sit in the seat of scoffers. But their delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law they meditate day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, which yield their fruit in its season, and their leaves do not wither. In all that they do, they prosper. The wicked are not so, but are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. And our final psalm today is Psalm 33. Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous. Praise befits the upright. Praise the Lord with a lyre, and make melody to him with the harp of ten strings. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully on the strings with loud shouts. For the word of the Lord is upright, and all his work is done in faithfulness. He loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the steadfast love of the Lord. By the word of the Lord the heavens were made, and all their host by the breath of his mouth. He gathered the waters of the sea as in a bottle. He put the deeps in storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spoke, and it came to be. He commanded, and it stood firm. The Lord brings the counsel of the nations to nothing. He frustrates the plans of the peoples. The counsel of the Lord stands forever, the thoughts of his heart to all generations. Happy is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people whom he has chosen as his heritage. The Lord looks down from heaven. He sees all humankind. From where he sits enthroned, he watches all the inhabitants of the earth. He who fashioned the hearts of them all and observes all their deeds. A king is not saved by his great army. A warrior is not delivered by his great strength. The war horse is a vain hope for victory, and by its great might it cannot save. Truly, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him, on those who hope in his steadfast love to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. Our soul waits for the Lord. 
He is our help and shield. Our heart is glad in him, because we trust in his holy name. Let your steadfast love, O Lord, be upon us, even as we hope in you. These are the words of the Lord. Thanks be to God. That was a lot to read today. <laughs> I'm it's like, a long I, song. I, I need to get some water. It's a long <laughs> song, a, a difficult Job passage. Uh, even Psalm 33 wasn't short. Um, hmm. Tough today. <laughs> tough today. Tough today. So Job is always going to be tough. How about right. we just acknowledge that up front? Job yes. is always going to be tough. And especially in light of what we just read from Psalm 133, where it talks about trusting in the Lord, deliverance that comes from the Lord, that, uh, you know, it's not the king who has power by his great army and stuff like that, doesn't, right. you know, can't do those things. Um, but to hope in the Lord. And what we understand is Job did hope in the Lord. Right. Yet here and, he is right. struggling so much and feeling uh, not support from the Lord, but certainly feeling um, abandoned. Uh, abandoned. I mean, he feels as if he's. I mean, and as as you were reading that today with Job, and he's and he's talking about this all encompassing pain. It's this mental anguish, but it's so that you know my bones, and it's. I mean, he felt pain, this mental anguish, this, I mean, he was physically in pain. You know, my skin falls away, my bones right. cry out. That's a terrible he image, is, isn't it? Yes. I mean, it is this completely all-encompassing pain and agony that he's feeling. And and he's crying out. He's like, where are you? What? Right, and even and even like those verses twenty four and twenty five, you know, surely one does not turn against the needy when in disaster they cry for help. Did I not weep for those whose day was hard? Was not my soul grieved for the poor? And uh, maybe there is the understanding that hey, because I have done these righteous things, why then do I need to suffer? You know, would not good behavior always result in in a good outcome a good consequence and and i think that's probably a lot of the overall message of job just the um you know that tension between uh if if we do the things that god commands us to do which i hope everybody is still <laughs> attempting to do but if right. we do the things that god commands us to do why then do we experience these difficulties and complications, and in Job's case, like these, uh, you know, like you were saying, the, the the spiritual and the emotional and the physical anguish that he's that he's experiencing, um, it certainly doesn't sound a whole lot like rejoice in the Lord, O oh, you righteous, you know, praise befits the upright, you know, hey, let's just sing songs because we're righteous, kind of thing. Right. Let's let's uh, let's enjoy that time. Um, I wonder if we look at. Uh, the other passages and see if that will give us any maybe insight into it. The, the Acts passage that you read from Acts 14, um, in the context, uh, Paul and Barnabas were in uh, Lystra and Derby. They had just healed a man that had been born with um, uh, crippled from birth, as it says, and the people started to worship Paul and Barnabas as Zeus and Hermes, mm -hmm. and they were thinking that these were Greek gods come down from Olympus to to uh, to bring these blessings to the people. And uh, Paul and Barnabas both, you know, they they tear their clothes and they're like, "No, don't worship us! We're don't not. we're not God! Don't right. worship us! We will point you to the one that you are to worship, and worship God only." Um, and and it's interesting then that they, uh, the problem is not celebrating the good things. The question is, how do we celebrate the right? Well, recognition of where the good things come from. It Absolutely. wasn't Paul and Barnabas were not doing this on their own authority. Right. And they were not to be right. worshipped. Don't celebrate us, but let's celebrate together what God is doing with you. You know, even through us, but right. these things. But what's interesting then is what, what you read today is the persecution that continues to come. Right. 
called, and you're like, even in his righteousness, in his obedience, right. you know, to do what he was, they stoned him <laughs> to the stoned. point that they thought he was dead. So, right. I mean, I can imagine he's laying in this heat. There's all this, like, imagery today. It's like, I can just see these <laughs> pictures today in my mind, but... Job's they, skin like rotting off, right, and, and pawing, dead, dead and laying in a heap, and they stone. drag him outside of the city, just right. thinking he's dead. So he's, I'm assuming, not responsive, and right. I would think maybe bleeding. a concussion, I mean, maybe bleeding, right? right, knocked out. And so you have him in his obedience, suffering this, and they drag him away. I'm. I would suppose probably to bury him if they thought he was dead. I right. mean, he's gone. Or at least to cast him out of the city. Right. But it flies. And yeah, right, right. 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 Again, the image. <laughs> but he gets up <laughs> and he goes back to it. And I'm like, okay, you know. Yeah, no, so what do, we, what do we do with it? Then he goes on to the next town, then they proclaim in the next town. Uh, some people come to faith, others don't, but then they go back around to the other churches that they had passed through before, and they, uh, they, they uh, train up and ordain leadership within those churches, and the ministry continues. And they open doors for the Gentiles. They open doors, welcoming right. people into right. the ministry of Christ, people that right. otherwise would not have been, and in the past had not been invited right. in. Right. So So through their death, through right. their struggles, more people are welcomed into new life. Right. Uh, and, and again, I think in our culture today, I don't know, I think in just human understanding, I don't know if this is a cultural thing, I think because, you know, 2,000 years ago, you know, people are people, right? right. Nobody wants to suffer. Right. right. Very few. Let's just be honest, right? But nobody wants to suffer. Nobody wants to willingly go into uh, situations where they're going to be stoned to death because of what they believe, because of what they say. And I wonder, I think for all of us who are Christians, there's always that, um, you know, whenever we're confronted or whenever, when, whenever we're presented with an opportunity of speaking about Jesus Christ, I'm sure that for most of us, there's always some little hesitancy in there somewhere. What's going to happen? Might I be rejected by this person I'm talking with? Might they no longer treat me as a friend? Might they, whatever that, or might there be a physical dangerous response? You know, I think in the United States, we don't regularly experience that, but I know in other, in other nations around this world, there are always stories of, of intense persecution, physical floggings and martyrdom, beatings, you right. know, people being killed because they have been so bold as to proclaim the faith, and uh, and I think, in a way, um, maybe and maybe this is the cultural thing. Maybe I think for Americans, or maybe I think for you know Western European Christians, whatever it might happen to be, we um, we're not acquainted well with struggles and sufferings. We, we shy away from it to the point of, are we paralyzed in even actually doing those things that we've been called to do? Now again, I don't think Paul was saying, hey, I like getting stoned to death. I'm sure he did not like that. But what was his motivating factor? He was compelled by his love of Christ and Christ's love for him to go and do these things, to risk death, to proclaim the gospel. Um, and, and so even with that, this, this John 11, this whole death of Lazarus story, uh, we, didn't, we didn't get to go on and finish that. Um, but this whole idea of Jesus, Jesus knows what's going on. Lazarus, you know, he gets word. Lazarus is sick. Okay. And he didn't immediately jump up and go. Uh, we find out that he um, remained where he was until G until Lazarus had actually died. Right. And then he talks about, hey, now now it's time to go. He, but in two, just the theme throughout Job and then the Acts passage, you know, they're going to stone you. You're going back there, right. even Jesus. Right. These you know, people are trying to kill you, Jesus. Right. Why, Why are, are you, you going, going back, back to this there? place? That the Father may be glorified. Mm. 
And mm. so there's even that obedience there. Right. Um, right, that the Father would be glorified. Um, Jesus knows, you know, I am going there to awaken him. Jesus knows he's dead. Right. But uh, no, yes, he does know he's dead. And he knew he couldn't go when they first called out because the glorification could, couldn't have glorified because he had to be dead. He had right. to do something beyond worldly ability, right. beyond right. human ability. I'm just not going to go just push on his shoulder and say, Lazarus, wake up. Right. He's going to go to the grave right. and he's going to say, Lazarus, come out. Or he's sick and then he was healed. No, right. he is dead and dead people stay dead. Right. And then here comes Jesus. Right. And he, right. And so, and in that, and so there's the, this concept of this time aspect mm. and God's timing and um, anyhow. Right. Well, so, God's timing and how God uses uh, terrible situations. Right. God uses terrible situations for his glory. Right. And that is a difficult concept, I think, for any of us to, to really wrestle right. with because, again, we don't like difficult. Right. We don't like terrible. We, we don't, don't even, even like uncomfortable. Right. We don't even want to speak out for the... I got head nails. Oh, oh. What if there's an awkward silence? What if they just look at right. me? What if they don't accept what I'm saying? Mm. These people are, like, stoning has to be right up there in one of the worst ways to die. Well, I would just have to say, right, right. that would have to be, like, one of the most I think getting horrific. eaten by sharks would be really bad, too. Yeah, but, anything with water would be terrible. <laughs> <laughs> anything with water, drowning, yeah, 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 that would be but terrible. But getting rocks thrown getting at you. Rocks thrown at you to the point that, like, bones are breaking, you're being, yeah, that would be horrific. Right. And so, you've got these... Terrible things. Here we are, like like you said. Yeah, well, they might make it weird. It might make it awkward. So we're just not going to say anything. These people mm-hmm. were willing to be obedient in the face of horror. Right. I mean, horrific. Right. Consequences. Right. Uh, that last line, verse sixteen of John eleven. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, "Let us also go that we may die with him." And, and I know that people kind of debate uh, what, is, what does he mean by that. Is that like uh, uh, just resignation? Is that just like giving up? Is that just, um, or, or is there a hint even of foreshadow that we know that all of the disciples did meet with a violent end, you know, except for, except for John who ended up writing Revelation later on in life, but, uh, but they all meet a violent end. Um, and I wonder if that's what's kind of missing even about, you know, our cultural Christianity today, how so much of it seems to emphasize the things that make me feel good or the comfort. Or, and, and those things are good. You know, there, there are lots of comfort words. There are lots of, of joy-filled moments. There are blessings bestowed. There are blessings that are bestowed. All of that is true. But I wonder sometimes if we miss out on the fullness of God's blessings because we're not willing to um, to follow Jesus where He leads. Right when it's hard. When it's hard. When it's hard, are there's a risk of right it not being in a. Well, I don't want to do that. Well, because it ultimately leads to death. I know last Sunday uh, we preached on a passage from uh, Luke chapter fourteen that was talking about unless you hate your very life, you cannot be my disciple. Unless you take up your cross daily, you cannot be my disciple. Um, and I don't know, uh, you know, nobody, that wasn't a common phrase, you know, take up your cross daily. You know, that's, no, I don't want to do that. But but these are the words of Jesus. These are the, the actions of Jesus. These are the words that actually lead to new and eternal life. Um, and so, you know, I know that we've been going through Job for a while, but ultimately Job does encounter God. Right. Um, and God does uh, come into essentially Job's presence, that God moved into Job's life in a way where he experienced what it was really like to be with God. And uh, that experience was only possible really through the struggle that Job had gone through. Um, and so I guess just kind of an encouragement to you and to me and to others who are listening. Um, if God loves us enough to really allow us to go through these difficult situations, 
maybe that should be a greater cause for our rejoicing, knowing that we are being transformed into the image of Jesus Christ, who was very acquainted with grief and betrayal and suffering. Um, and then when he rose from the dead, is promising that we will experience a life like his uh, if we've gone through the death like his. So, you know, it maybe, yeah, it, it's hard to be in the midst of, but the outcome, I, I guess, just really has to be worth it. Well, and, and throughout all of the Psalms today, we hear these words of sing praises and rest in the steadfast love. Um, this Psalm 147, we read it mm. every week. Every week. Um, he gathers the outcast. Mm. He heals the brokenhearted. Mm. He binds up their wounds. I, I think that's all true. And in all of those moments with Job and, and Paul and even with you, I mean, he's there. Right. And, you know, his understanding is beyond measure. Mm. It's, he's there in those places of suffering. Right. And he's there in those moments of difficulty. Mm -hmm. And um, and praise the Lord. How good it is to sing praises to right. him. His love is steadfast. Mm -hmm. So So how do we enter into that with people who really are struggling right now? Or how do we even recognize uh, when we are going through our own struggles? Uh, how do we then... Um, Continue to hold fast to God, holding fast to us, and I think that's really what it is. It's God yeah. who, it's God who reaches us. It right. is God who finds us, and maybe as others, as we walk alongside other people who are struggling and and, and experience their own difficulties, how can we just be present with them, and and uh, and praying for them, and trusting that God is the one that's reaching out for them, mm -hmm. and trusting that in those moments that as as they cry out and we walk alongside them, sometimes there's not a fix. Right. And recognizing that, you know, Job did. Job's like, what have I done to deserve this? I mean, he speaks pretty harshly throughout the book of Job to God. You know, what is going on? Why are you allowing me? You know, he's questioning. He's like, why he's, do you even care about me? Why do you, you right. know, like, I, mean, I yeah. wish my day, the day that I'm born, would be wiped off the Right. Memory. But God's bigger than that. Right. He is, and and when people are, when that is where they are at, I think sometimes we just have to let them be mm -hmm. in that place, right. and and you do pray, and then you put it at the feet of Christ, and knowing that He heals mm -hmm. and He cares, and um, and just be, right. and just have to be sometimes. Just have to be sometimes. No, I think that's right. Well, uh, I certainly hope and pray that uh, as you as you read and listen and, and do your own study on these things, uh, to just be and just be in the presence of the Lord. And if you really do have challenges and struggles, you know, do reach out to somebody that can just be with you uh, and sit with you. Um, you know, again, I think the whole concept of loving God and loving your neighbor. Um, you know, how does God love us? Then how do we love our neighbor? And um, those two have to go hand in hand. So uh, be in a good community where you can find people to be with you and where you can be with others. Um, and just trust that God is there in the midst of our difficulties and is working them according to his good purpose. You want to close us in prayer? I'd be happy to. Gracious Lord, and... Um, Thank you for your word to us today, um, difficult words and um, difficult circumstances that we read. And as we read and as we hear these words um, throughout scripture, but then even in the Psalms, the words of praise, the, the words of um, hope in you, um, may we just be in the moment. May we recognize your hand. Um, in good times and in blessings. Um, help us to recognize your hand in those blessings. Help us to recognize your presence and your care um, in the difficult moments. Help us to love those around us. Help us to be with people um, 
be a listening ear, be a loving neighbor. Um, help us to love them as you love us, um, that we can grow closer in community and grow closer um, in you, to you. And um, in Jesus' name we ask these things. Amen. Amen. All right, everybody. I certainly hope you have a blessed day, and we'll look forward to the next time we can be together again. Take care. Bye-bye.